Hey, everybody. Welcome to the third week of Flax Live. So I hope everybody's hey, everybody. had a good week. Welcome uh -oh. to the third week of Flax Live. So I hope everybody's hey, everybody. had a good week. Oops. Um, note to self, turn off the live stream in the other window. Okay. So fix that. <laughs> so hope everybody had a good week. Um, I am tonight. Uh, my name's Amanda, by the way. Well, this is Flax Live. That is um, our live knit along um, of the Flax Light Sweater by Tin Can Knits. Um, welcome to the podcast channel Chronicles of Yarnia. We are um, coming to you live from Yarnia, which is Montclair, New Jersey's local yarn store. Um, and yeah, so for the next hour, I'll be sitting with you and working on a sweater that I'm making for my son, Charlie, who is four. Um, Let's see, this week has, I am actually, y'all are getting a, a much more energized version of me um, tonight than, uh, than I was last night or the night before. There is, I don't know, some cold ripping through Northern New Jersey that usually I'm impervious to. Um, I, I feel like I've had everything. So as we I've mentioned, right, I've got lots of kids that have more than a 20 year age span. So like I've been exposed to every bug I feel like ever. So I rarely get sick, but this one, the Abby was sick. Abby's my 10 year old. She was sick last week and then I got sick on Sunday. So I had a fever for the past two days and I was like not feeling well this morning, but definitely sort of, you know how you feel like you're coming out of that haze yeah, so I started feeling like I was coming out of that haze somewhere around four this afternoon. I was like, whew, I don't know, God planned it that I was going to be okay for this podcast. It was just between going to see Lily at her concert on Saturday night, and then I got sick on Sunday, and then I was better for the this uh, live tonight. So everything worked out, okay? Um, it was just life telling me I needed to sleep for a couple of days, maybe. <laughs> That's always good. Um, but anyway, I hope everybody else is healthy. I know Jen, Jen's son, Ollie has been sick too with the same thing. Like literally every kid and every teacher is sick with the same thing in Montclair, New Jersey. It's a thing. And I suspect it's not just in our town. Um, but anyway, glad to see you guys, uh, coming in tonight. Um, so yeah, I'll show you the progress that I've made since last week. So last week we set our raglan markers right and started knitting the yoke so increasing this is a i keep wearing yoke sweaters not raglan sweaters um but if this was a raglan we would have like raglan lines here so we set our markers right um and started knitting down on the yoke um and so i finished the yoke yay so this is what it looks like and you'll see why i have been dying to knit with this little ball of yarn look at that isn't it so cute this is self-striping yarn so it makes the little pattern all by itself um when charlie's gonna love it so yay and basically this is all the color changes there's gonna be the rest of it's gonna be the rest of the sweater is gonna be this dark blue color Right. And then there's a little bit of green to do the cuffs in, but this is mostly the fun of the sweater. Um, but you can see the raglan lines that are here. Right. There's one here. Uh, yeah. My screen isn't mirrored. So it messes with my brain on which direction I should point. There's another one there right and it, that's where my marker is red is for raglan and then the garter section of the sleeve is here between the green markers green is for garter um yeah so that and i didn't mess up the garter um i have made this before 
this sweater before years ago and I definitely had places where I forgot to do the garter line in one so there was like a little stockinette row this time I successfully knit garter the whole way yay um but uh but yeah so now I um I tried it on Charlie um to make sure that it fit so to do that let me show you a little picture of what it looks like on him so here's Charlie and I had him try on the yoke of this sweater just to make sure that it fit him right um so the way that I did this I uh there he is isn't he cute he was so happy with it um so what I did was I took my sweater here I have my pearl strings um I took my sweater <laughs> the yoke and I put my pearl strings this is this is a very long pearl string right like pearl strings are right this is like more than two yards of cord so I mean it's it's big enough that like I could easily use it to put um to go around like a body of the sweater for me so that I can try it on but it's really great for trying stuff on because basically what you do is you just attach the pearl string to the end of your needle like this right and then you can just pull it through do, do, do. so now I have like an extension of my needle so instead of being 16 inches around it can just and I usually put the other end of the pearl string this extremely long pearl string on the other needle just so that I don't lose any stitches um because yeah kids do that when they try sweaters on um but see then I can like move the stitches onto the pearl string and it gets bigger and bigger um until I can like slide it over his head and he can try it on yeah like that um uh, yeah like that um so what I was doing is I was checking to make sure that the yoke was long enough that when that I could like pinch it together under his arms at the raglan markers and that that was a good it, it was it would comfortably go around his arms because if it if it was like too short then I would have knit longer I would have made another inch or two you know like maybe an inch longer just to make sure that the length was enough that it went past the divide for his arms right you want your yoke to be long enough this distance here to here to be long enough to go under your arms this particular sweater has a long sleeve divide but <laughs> the flax light doesn't um so that's what i did i put it on him just like that and I had him hold his arms out and I made sure that the yoke was big enough to go under his little arms and it is that was just right so that's where I ended off and I'm ready to start the next part of the sweater so let's see what it is what comes next we don't know I sort of know um I don't actually read the pattern ahead and especially since um I haven't felt well the past two days I literally did didn't feel well enough to even like knit or anything um which was unusual but I didn't that was how badly I felt um so I definitely didn't read the pattern or do much prep we're doing this really live uh, just to show you where we are in the skein right here's my skein all the colors in the middle are gone dee, dee, dee. we're just uh you know now we're just on this blue part for the rest of the sweater um which is going to be lovely it's a good unisex color this is again the gauge dye works um it was a skein that was dyed specifically for the flax light pattern um and it makes this rainbow on the yoke and then it's just blue for the rest and then we'll switch to the green for the cuffs and the band at the bottom 
ribbing at the bottom. Um, still a little cough. All right. So let's look at the pattern next. Yay, black slide. So what page are we on? We did page one, right? Where we figured out what size we are. And I always have to remind myself which pattern size do I look at? That is one, two, three, fourth number in the parentheses. That's not bold. Okay, so I finished all the way on page four to, for option one, I knit one, two, three, six inches, right? And then I tried it on Charlie and I made sure that it fit him and it does. Okay, so we're down, done with this first column at page four. The next... <laughs> The next the next column starts with this feeling adventurous part. If you're making an adult sweater, um, you might want to consider making short rows in the back. Short rows raise the back of the neck and often make a more comfortable fit. But if you're making a kid's sweater or if you're making your first sweater, you don't have to put short rows in. I'm not putting short rows in Charlie's sweater. Um, it's going to be just fine. And also, especially in a kid's sweater, if you don't put short rows in, they can wear it frontwards or backwards and it doesn't matter. Um, so now I'm going to separate the body and sleeves. So what's this say? On the next round, body and sleeves are separated. Sleeve stitches are placed on hold on waste yarn using a darning needle Red waist yarn through live sleeve stitches. Keep beginning of round marker in place. All other markers can be removed. I'm going to keep those uh, green as for garter markers in. Next round. Place one, two, three, 42. Place 42 stitches on waist yarn. The stitches from the beginning of round marker to the raglan marker. Using backwards loop method, cast on one, two, three, four, ten st stitches. Okay, ten stitches. All right, got it. All right, so here we go. I am right now one stitch from my beginning of round marker. So, and I have my supplies here to, um, to set up uh, or, or to put my stitches on waist yarn. So I'm using, oops, here we go. I'm using Sugarbush Bowl, um, which is like my, I have so much. Of this, and we had this in the store in our stash. Um, it's a great round, smooth yarn, um, not fuzzy, and it's white. So that means you guys are going to be able to see it really clearly against this blue. Um, I also have some wool needles. These are my favorite for almost everything because. The eyes are so big. It's super easy to get the yarn to go through them. Okay, so now I have my length of yarn on a needle, and this is what we're going to do. Um, okay, I'm going to take off this beginning of round marker because otherwise it's going to dangle on this needle. And while I move these to the um, to the waist yarn, and it's probably going to get lost. So here we go. I'm just moving these to waist yarn. I have to say, when I I may, like I said, I'm going to keep these green stitch markers on just to mark the garter spot, but 
I have been known to knit my stitch markers in. I think these will be fine because they're on the top of the work. I think it was when I was casting on stitches under the arm of my sweater. I distinctly remember this. Um, I think that was it. I think it was when I was casting on stitches under the arm of a sweater and I had a beginning of round stitch marker or maybe it was a half it marked the half of um, under a sleeve. Uh, I knitted my stitch marker into my work. I had to take it out with some wire cutters. So that's never fun. Uh, it's sort of a shame, but it's not a tragedy. Definitely would lose a stitch marker instead of undo the work. That's for sure. Okay. So now this guy, all these um, sleeve stitches are on the waist yarn. I basically just threaded them, <laughs> threaded them onto my um, darning needle, which was attached to the waist yarn. I've got one tail on this side, one tail on this side. I'm just gonna tie them into a loose knot here. Ta -da -da, just like that. And they're going to sit there. That's it. Okay. Now, Tin Can Knit says use backward loop method. My preferred method for under sleeves, you can use backwards loop method to cast on. There's nothing wrong with that. I find it easier to find my, or easier to find my stitches later using the knitted cast on. So I'm going to do that. So a knitted cast on, basically I turn my work around. So if like, this is my normal direction of work, right? Because my yarn is coming out of my, uh, let me, here we go. My yarn is coming out of my right hand and into my left hand onto the left needle. Okay, we're gonna turn the whole thing around. So now my yarn, which is sort of counterintuitive, it's like starting the beginning of a row is on my left it's coming out of the left side so it is like it's like starting the beginning of a row right so i knit like i'm starting the beginning of the row and then i just pass that stitch back over to the left needle now i have a new first stitch on my left needle i'm going to knit that one second and pass it over do it again third fourth Fifth, six. No, that was six. Seven, eight, nine. Yay. Okay. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice. Perfect. Okay. Then we turn the work around and just continue knitting all the way until we get to the next raglan marker. Just like that. Yay. All right. While I stitch across, I'm going to check. All right. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. And yeah, you can use a stitch holder um, for sure. I honestly don't have one. Uh, I would pro probably lose it. Although, which one did I? I recently used my pearl strings as my, um, in my, which sweater was it? The Magnolia Bloom that I just finished. I used my pearl strings as my stitch holder for um, for my sleeves, which worked out great because I didn't even have to like pass it onto a needle. I just like 
put the purl strings on the end of my um on the end of my left needle and like pulled it through all the sleeve stitches and then stopped when I got to the end. Yay, let's get rid of some not necessary chat messages. <laughs> All right, almost to the next raglan. Mm -hmm. All right. That raglan, oh, see, I just got to the marker. This raglan comes off and we do the whole thing again. I got my little Kelmscott little uh, scissors. They're so cute. I love these scissors. They're super sharp too. Um, where's the end of this yarn? Here it is. It's a little tangly in here. Okay. All right, same thing again. We're going to move these stitches over to waist yarn again. And after we do this, guys, last week was so busy setting up those raglans and starting the raglan increases. This week's going to be super easy because I think after this, I literally am just knitting garter for the next, or not garter, stockinette in the round for the next half hour. So you're going to have to give me conversation topics. Tell me all your questions, burning questions, topics you want to know about. As we'll check the pattern after this, but I think it's continue knitting in the round forever and ever. All right, let's remove this guy. There we go. Yay. Oh, you know what? I forgot to leave. I forgot to put my beginning of round stitch marker in again. Well, at least we know where it goes. It goes at the beginning of the um, sleeve divide. Um, so where was that supposed to go? It goes here. There we go. All right. <laughs> hey to Philly and hey to Maine, who was the first commenter. One, two, Three, four, just using this knitted cast on again. Five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yay. Alrighty. Yay. All right, so now I'm knitting across here. And then we will check the pattern again, just to be sure, because that's always a good idea. What am I actually supposed to do rather than guess what I'm supposed to do? I've done that many times. Generally not advisable. Oh. Getting like little dust flecks on my yarn because my yarn ball is rolling around on the ground. Sorry, Charlie. I don't think you'll care. You, Charlie rolls around on the ground anyway, so it'll make him feel at home. And then this sweater. Tonight I'm wearing my I don't know. There's a little bit. It's been quite chilly. I was feeling okay. I was feeling like I wanted to be cozy tonight. So I put on my Saturday night sweater by Petite Knits, which is a store sample, but I love it. It's like it's cozy, but it also leaves like my arms free. So, so it's like a half length sleeve. Um so <laughs> but it's silk mohair like the whole thing it's five strands of silk mohair hold, held together which means you knit it on like a huge needle um but well not huge it's like a 10 and a half i think and a 10.75 or something like that maybe it's 10.75 or 10.875 i forget it's somewhere in that area but it works up really fast much faster than an adult sweater on a size five needle does but let's check this pattern and see how we are doing okay so now our sleeve stitches so we've done this whole separate body and sleeves the last paragraph says sleeve stitches are on hold and there are 144 body stitches on the needles i'm going to take their word for it i'm not going to count those for you I think that's probably true. Work in stockinette, knit every round. So just knit, 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 knit until the body measures for regular length. That's what we're doing. One, two, three, nine inches from the underarm. All right. We got nine inches of stockinette. And basically, so that's what we're doing. Well, that's what I'm going to be doing the rest of this week. It's knitting nine inches of stock in it. Um, then it says all options down here. Change to smaller needles, blah, 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 and do the one by one ribbing. This is what I'm going to do next week. I'll finish all of the nine inches of stock in it this week. Then I'll switch next week. I'll change to smaller needles and start the one by one ribbing. Um, and, and after I do a few rounds of ribbing, then I'll also start a sleeve next week as well. Right. So I'll start a sleeve next week and um, we can talk about sleeves. And I think that'll be 
good. So this week I just have nine inches of stock in it to do. So uh, this is the first round after that knitted cast on, which this is one reason I like the knitted cast on. There's like a little ridge where we did the knit stitches, which is a little bit more stable than the backwards loop method. And it's easier for me to see where my next stitch is. Um, I've, I have trouble with the backwards loop method sometimes figuring out, they, they just like twist around the needle for me. Um, that could be user error. I'm a knitted cast on fan for underarms. <sighs> so, all right. Now we have 30 minutes to chat while I knit stocking up. Ah! So, I'll switch over here and watch you got your chat. Yay. Okay. So, I guess obvious topics, unless. Um, oh, and Sarah, no worries if you haven't started yet. But that's the great thing I think about YouTube lives versus like, you know, sometimes if we have, um, you know, Zoom knit alongs or something like that, we, they're saved, but not in a place that you can find them forever. But this one's going to be up on YouTube as a series. We'll, we'll make its own little, you know, playlist of Flax Live, and you'll be able to, you know, pick it up anytime um, and watch me knit each section. If you're like, hey, how do I separate for sleeves? How do I, you know, set those raglan markers or anything like that? Like, it'll always be there forever and ever on the YouTubes. So, <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess at this point, it's a good moment to say, if you're enjoying this knit along, why don't you hit that like button? Um, I really, uh, I, uh, I'm, I wonder if Eric's watching tonight, smash that like button. That's what he says. Um, but, uh. But yeah, it's, uh, I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, we're at our house. We're getting ready for Thanksgiving. It's not going to be like a huge to do this year. My big girls aren't coming home from college. Christmas is going to be big, but not Thanksgiving. Um, so, which is fine with me. Uh, um, but even not big, of course, there's like a dinner with six or seven items. So, <laughs> because I just can't help it. There's things that I love to make. Um, and there's only a few times a year I make them. So, I mean, of course, a little turkey, a little mashed potatoes but um one thing that I feel like is particularly southern that I always make is a strawberry jello I call it strawberry jello thing because like I don't know what to call it but it's like a strawberry jello pretzel salad thing um and <laughs> that has like a crust of pretzels and pecans and brown sugar and butter on the bottom um and then the second layer and you like bake that in the oven and then let it cool all the way and then the second layer is a mixture of sour cream and cream cheese and cool whip and sugar and so you like mix all those together and then 
put that on the cool pretzel. Then you make strawberry jello. Um, but you don't add in the second, like, you know how, like, when you make jello, you like boil the water, put in the gelatin, and you put in cool water on top, but you don't put in the cool water. Instead, you put in frozen strawberries, which cools it down, cools the jello down. And so once it's like cold, it thaws the strawberries a little bit and um anyway and cools down the jello at the same time then you slowly and carefully put that on top of the cream layer um and then the you know arrange the strawberries nicely on top and we call that a salad and it's like basically a dessert but it's a salad so you have it during dinner <laughs> Yay. I love it so much. We basically, I basically only make it because it's so many steps. You have to like bake the crust the night before and let it cool. I mean, I have done it the day of. Bad idea. Much better to do it the day before. Um, and then, uh, yeah, bake it, bake it the night, day before, let it, um, cool, then do the cool it topping like first thing in the morning and then the jello and then let it set all day it's so yummy but that's a hassle right like that's a 36 hour project uh, so yeah i only make it on thanksgiving christmas and easter dinner basically that's it <laughs> but the kids demand that we have it on all of those all of those holidays so I don't know I have uh I've gotten mixed reviews from not non-southerners on strawberry jello thing but I love it uh, so I don't know if you guys uh have something in particular you're like super looking forward to this week um if anybody's like, oh my goodness, I want to try strawberry jello thing, let me know. I'll try to find a recipe and put it down in the comments. Or I guess I could post it to the blog of Chronicles of, of, uh, of our website. Um, so far, I mean, I just have it in an email from my mom. <laughs> but let's see. Uh, but I'm really glad to not be traveling this year. Uh, so on top of having a fever for the past two days, not COVID, by the way, like I said, I did take a test for that, not COVID. It's the other infectious disease going around Montclair, whatever it is. Um, I had a flat tire yesterday morning. Like, how, how does, how does fate converge that I have both a fever and a flat tire on the same morning? Not so. But I have to say, like, um, we had, I called, uh, a mechanic, which I have, I hate to admit, like has not been my task to do for a long time. Um, but now I've got to like take care of my own car. <laughs> Silly. But anyway, but I did it and they were so sweet. They came out and like, um, filled up the tire with air and I was able to like get it to their service center it was just a slow leak it needed to be patched <sighs> sometimes when you don't deal with these things for a long time it's intimidating to have to deal with them again I don't know
Oh, homemade baked beans. I would love homemade baked beans, Trisha. That would be delicious. Oh my goodness. That sounds like a great idea. And for breakfast. Yeah. Uh, I agree. Triple. A. Uh, I, I agree. I need to get triple A. I have, I had it years ago. Um, and then I got some cars through a dealership that had like their own service program, but the one I just got didn't have that. And yeah, I, it's, I gotta do that. And I should make sure my big girls have triple A too, right? Like now all three of them, because they're all driving. So maybe I should look into that. <laughs> that sounds like a, that, that sounds like, um, you know, it's a different, it's a different thing for a knitter to say, I'm giving you socks for Christmas, right? Like if I give you hand knit socks for Christmas, that's a labor of love. But if it's like Hane socks from Costco, which is usually when, what people think of, it's like, I got socks for Christmas. I feel like if I gift them AAA for Christmas, that's sort of like, you know, getting undershirts or something like that socks but not hand knit socks for christmas uh, very practical very needed not what was on your christmas list <laughs> ha <laughs> yeah. exactly beach girl yes yeah it is a good christmas gift just definitely not what's on a 22 year old's list Oh, oh my goodness. Setting the marshmallows on the sweet potatoes. Oh man. On fire. I wonder how that, I mean, so, you know, I'm a Girl Scout leader too. So, uh, and I have great help this year, which is amazing. I'm great co-leaders who are doing way more than I am this year. But we had a camporee and it's so funny to watch the girls because they all have different techniques for s'mores. There are definitely s'more girls who like take their marshmallow and just stick it in the hottest part of the fire and light that sucker into flames, wait till it burns to a crisp and then eats it. Um, and then there are others who like let it slowly roast on your uh, on your sweet potatoes though do you broil them do you broil the top of your sweet potatoes i've never done that i just bake them which means they get melty but not really brown but i bet broiling them would be delicious or at least much prettier with a little bit of caramelization, but I agree. It would be very easy to set them on fire. There is a very fine line when you're broiling between perfect and burnt. Very fine line. I usually go over it. My dessert for Thanksgiving is banana pudding. Yeah, you broil them. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Then I totally understand the setting on fire part. I have had such a craving for banana pudding recently. So that is my uh my Thanksgiving dessert with vanilla wafers but with meringue. So I'm going to make a pudding from scratch with bananas, vanilla wafers and a meringue. I might broil it. We'll see if I catch it on fire. 
<laughs> that would be fun. So. Yeah. I, I don't think I've caught broiled things on fire, but I definitely have like literally burned them to a crisp. Pulled ash out of the oven. Oh, well. Yeah. Teddy is who I'm catering to for Thanksgiving. And I think he would love a banana pudding. So, and I wouldn't mind it either. And he'll probably eat it for breakfast for like the next several days. And I'll have the strawberry jello thing for breakfast for the next several days. So, yeah. yeah well, that's my plan of creating breakfasts and lunch. <sighs> Yeah, see, my problem with the broiler is, you're right, it is like one to two minutes in the broiler, and that's all you should do. And during that time, I always think, oh, I can do this one thing. And then by the time I do that one thing, whatever's in the broiler is burned. Um, I'm no good at standing there and waiting for whatever's in the broiler to finish. <laughs> So this year, I think last year, last year I was away for Thanksgiving on the whole weekend. I feel like the year before, was I away the whole weekend as well? I forget. Maybe not. Um, but anyway, I'm here this weekend. So that means I am <clears throat> at Yarnia for Small Business Saturday, which is exciting. I love Small Business Saturday. I love Small Business Saturday before I had a small business. Um, it's just, it's like such an energetic time of year. So we are, I'll be here all day on Saturday. Um, and Kathleen has been super busy. I'm just looking around making, she's been super busy making a ton of kits. We just got in. Um, a whole bunch of Mason Dixon, the modern daily knitting, uh, modern daily knitting books. Um, yeah, but we were like restocked on all of our favorites. So, um, oh, and uh, I don't know if you saw the special that we're having on Lopi blankets this weekend. Um, but if I didn't already have two, I would hop on that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's such an energetic time. So I'm going to be here all day on Saturday. And then I think Sunday, or is it Friday? Is it Friday or is it Sunday? We're going to go to like one of the, the holiday markets, um, that open around this time and just like walk around and see all the crafts and things that folks are selling at the market winter market so <laughs> that'll be super fun uh it is it is one of my favorite times of year and then next week well I'm sure everybody's shocked. Next week, I'm traveling again. I go to Florida for a day. Um, I'll be back on Tuesday in time for our podcast in the morning on Tuesday. Barely in time. Um, but then I'll be back for our next episode um, of Flax Live in the evening. Um, and then just a few days, I guess, what is, is, uh, the first of December on Thursday? Is that it? Oh. Excuse me. Now I'm super curious. I forget which days are which. Yeah. The first of December is on Thursday. So that's the beginning of Vlogmas. So if you if 
there's folks that weren't watching last year vlogmas is like a um so for vlogmas we basically release an episode every day like say seven to ten minutes ish of what we're doing that day for the month of december from the first through the 25th so um or maybe we'll do through the 26th this year because that's the last day of hanukkah um but in any event so vlogmas starts on thursday the first which is also teddy's second birthday yay so you'll get to see what we do for teddy's second birthday which i don't know what it is yet um i was uh i i literally don't know what we're gonna do um but maybe go see some christmas lights holiday lights maybe um but those episodes usually come out like midnight because i edit them at night um and you can watch them the next day but it's a it ends up being a super busy time for me at least this year my work has slowed down a little bit which is perfect timing so i can get those videos edited every day and out to you guys i just love it too because i get to see what jenna's doing every you know we basically sort of divide up the calendar by threes so you know every third day um we you know one of us is recording our day so it's a lot less work than like some podcasters which who are solo do a video every day um i uh that i think would be exhausting to do one every day but for us it's like every third day um which is fine and uh yeah it, it's super fun to see what jen's doing at her house what kathleen's doing at her house and what Haley's doing as she comes home from college um yeah you get to see like i said teddy on his birthday kathleen and jen have birthdays Haley's birthday is coming up this week in two days <coughs> her birthday's on thanksgiving this year so we have and Catherine, my second daughter turns 21 on the 20th this year so we're gonna have a 21st birthday party that'll be fun i'll have uh, a little bit of the beginning of the night on that i'm sure and vlogmas so definitely a happy birthday for Catherine. that's an important day so uh but that's uh that that will be going on during the month of december um in addition to a lot of yarnia activities because december is prime knitting month i have to still um figure out how to do the well I think I know how I just need to actually do the um my mom has asked for um dish towels with crocheted tops to go around the refrigerator handles so and she sent me a sample of one that her mom made for her um and she's like please do this so I think I know what to do I just have to do it um and then uh i have a another crochet I th are all of my holiday gift projects crochet it could be i i think i think all my holiday gift projects are crochet because i have one that i'm making my partner um which is a little crocheted amy Garumi, but it has like crochet and tarja where you switch colors in the row which i've never done before so that's going to be interesting um i really should start that first flax live then maybe groovy yay ida first sweater 
I'm so glad you're enjoying it though. And I think there's nothing like wearing your own handmade sweaters, especially after you make a few, you learn like what you really like in a sweater. Um, we're knitting the body of the sweater this week. One, <clears throat> one tip that I have is to find a sweater that you like the length of, that you like the, like where it falls on your hips uh, or whatever part of your body you like for your sweater to fall to. And, you know, lay the sweater that you're knitting on top of that. And actually I've measured against sweatshirts too. Um, if that's, you know, the, the length that I liked. Um, and I just make sure that the collar to the hem is the length of that garment that I know hits my body in the place that I want it to hit, the hit my body. Because the pattern designer might say nine inches, right? But everybody has a different size torso. Um, so nine inches might be the average or might be what worked for their testers that were that size. But it might, you know, if you're long torso or short torso, that might not be the, the ideal length for you. So, you know, one way to figure that out or figure out what size you like is to measure against, you know, something you already have in your wardrobe that is the length you want it to be. Um, so, uh, or, I mean, you can always put your sweater on pearl strings and try it on. In this case, we do have a ribbing, like one and a half inches at the bottom. So that's, as they say, like stop one and a half inches on the stockinette before the ribbing. Um, but, um, you know, a good, you can either try it on with your pearl strings or the other way is to, like I said, measure it against a garment you already have in your wardrobe. Haha, uh -huh. Dory, teachers are not getting knitted presents this year. I am full up on a, well, I don't know. Let me, I'll, I'll hold out on that. And this is why. So after, I have to go to Florida again. So I'm going for a day next week. Then I have to go again um, on the 11th through the 14th. But then we're driving to Iowa to pick up my daughter from college. That's two full days of driving to Iowa, two full days of driving out of Iowa. But I'll be sitting in the car because I'm, I'll be driving some, but I'm probably not going to be the primary driver. Um, that's a lot of knitting time. So uh, I could do some quick little teacher gifty things. We'll see. TBD. Maybe I'll take the supplies. Um, but honestly, too, if Kathleen and Jen and I decide actually get our acts together and start our holiday sweaters and that and the um uh the cotton merino glam, then I'll probably have a, a sweater to knit as well. Um and that might be my priority. Ha, exactly. All right. So Guess what, guys? I think we're getting to the end of our hour. My goodness. See, I told you last week I was working and working right up to the end of time. And this week uh, we divided for those sleeves pretty quickly. And now I'm just knitting stockinette. So I've finished about uh, 
three quarters of an inch. Definitely starting to see more blue on this sweater. Yay. Um, but yeah, so like I said, for the rest of this week, I'm just gonna continue knitting this until there's nine inches of blue, which is quite a long way. Um, we'll see, I might get it done over the Thanksgiving weekend. If not, I've got all the way to Florida and back. Although I feel like that might be cutting it a little bit close since I've got to see you guys on Tuesday night when I get home. Um, but that'll be my contingency plan. Uh, but anyway, nine inches later, I'll see you ready to do some ribbing as well as start some sleeves. So I hope for those of you who are knitting along with me, enjoy your flax this week or your flax light, whichever you're knitting. For those of you that are um, knitting or just hanging out while you're knitting other things or having a cup of tea and hanging out, enjoy your week and we'll see you next time. Bye.